Hello everyone, good morning and welcome back to So What If I So. So today you will see the same outfit in my two next vlogs because I'm filming them both today because uh, September is going to be super busy and I kind of want to get ahead of myself a little bit. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about something that isn't talked about nearly enough in the sewing community and that is sewing fails or makes that are perfect that we just don't like. Because the thing is, it's come to my attention, having just had one myself, that all of us do it. It's completely normal. And yet, we don't talk about it. Because either we don't want to, either you know, we feel a bit embarrassed because it's a pattern everyone else has loved but we're not keen on. Or that, you know, it, we've done something really stupid and something's gone wrong but the thing is we all do it now um somebody who i love for talking about this is ellen the stitches if you want a proper giggle um go to the sewing fail post on her grid from a couple of months ago it is just basically she did something really funny with the neck band of a jumper and instead of just you know hiding it away she posted about it properly and it was just great because you could see everyone in the community going oh my god I've been there and that's great that's what we want we don't want our sewing community that's just full of exceptional makes where everyone's going how do you have the time or why is everything you make perfect because it's not it's really not um and to be honest like I made my Davenport it's beautiful but it's just not me and I don't like it and I'm sure there's things I could do to make me like it a little bit more but right now I feel a little low and I think we need to normalize that as well this morning I asked on my Instagram story how many of you lose your sojo after a sewing fail and we're into the hundreds who feel like they just you know they they completely lose their sewing there's about eight of you who don't so congratulations to the eight um <laughs> but it is genuinely it's one of those things where it can undermine your confidence as a sewist and I remember towards the beginning of my sewing career making things that didn't work or getting halfway through things and going oh I don't like those but I wasn't on Instagram so a I didn't know there were other people having the same experience but also I didn't have the pressure of posting about it now again I'm not someone who necessarily feels the pressure of Instagram but equally I think I take like you know I take pride in my ability as a sewist and be able to grow and develop and my makes being better than the last and constantly progressing so it can be frustrating when you make something really well and you just don't like it but the fact is, I think I'm going to say this now, when we shop, we try things on. When we sew, we can't. And that's, that's literally where it comes down to. You're not going to suit everything in a shop, so I don't know why we expect every sewing pattern to suit us. I know it's frustrating because you've invested time and fabric and emotion as well. So it does make you feel a bit down. And I think for me, I made my Davenport and I just sort of felt a bit underwhelmed realized I just didn't really like it and then I tried to finish a work in progress I've got and then remembered why I'd stopped because the fabric is so hard to sew with and then I just got more and more frustrated and then I just didn't sew for like the whole back holiday weekend where I was going to do loads of stuff so it can get the best of us down and I'm not the best of us it can get any of us down and I think today what I want to do is firstly recognise that in a video, you are normal, we all make mistakes, we make beautiful things that we end up hating, it's normal, it's fine. Please, if you take one thing away from this, do not beat yourself up about that. But my other purpose for this video is I've sort of lost my sojo because of that make and I've decided I have today off. Um, so I've decided that I'm going to try and get it back. And I think it's different for me. I tried all the things I normally try when I'm just having a bit of a sojo dip. But this is different because my actual sewing confidence and sense of what I like has actually been affected. So I've asked you guys for some tips and tricks on Instagram on what you do when you're trying to recover from a sewing fail. I've got a few things I want to try. And I'm basically gonna vlog my day with you and we're gonna go through each bit and see if it's working, how I'm feeling, and hopefully by the end of the day, I'll have a little bit more enthusiasm back. I probably won't have my whole sojo back, but I'm hoping I'll have something. I'll have a sense of sort of what I wanna do. I'll be excited about things. So 
let's get going. The first tried and tested tip, which lots of you have come out with, um, and she says fabulous is the sort of, she's put it into words in the comment box, but lots of you also message me this, is a quick win. Now, I also recommend this when you're generally lacking your sojo, um, but I didn't know what I fancied making. However, I am wearing the Closet Core Mylan sweatshirt and I am doing one in collaboration with the rag shop and I'm going to be vlogging that anyway. Um, and so I know this pattern suits me. This is my second one, so I'll have one more. I love them and I wear them constantly. So it's worth having like three, I love them. So I know the pattern works, the fabric's gorgeous and it's an easy sew. So we're gonna try doing that. And then I've also got a bag full of projects next to me in case I go actually, I want to do this or mm, this isn't working I'm gonna stop here before I make mistakes so let's have a go I tried and tested you're gonna see some time lapses of me doing it and then I'll feed back on how I feel Eight. Um, I have tried the overwhelming, so basically when I first tried this, only She's So Fabulous has suggested it. Now many, many, many of you have suggested it, as you can see. Um, I've retreated to a tried and tested pattern. So I'm halfway through my Mylan sweatshirt. All will be properly revealed. I've put some time lapses in, um, but all will be properly revealed when the actual vlog comes out. But here we are. Um, it looks great, it's been a joy to sew with my new machine and it's actually been relaxing because I don't have to look at the instructions, I know what I'm doing, I'm, I'm literally wearing one now and I forgot just how nice a sew it is so I'm really enjoying that. I've got something on Netflix and I'm just sewing this up, I'm super excited. We are back on the floor and I've got this big box of fabric next to me. So I sorted my whole stash around two months ago. Um, but I would say it's still in need of sorting, particularly as I did some fabric shopping <laughs> over the bank holiday, which I don't regret actually. It was really lovely and I like because it's a lot more affordable for me to get things at the bank holiday and then I'm sort of queued up for the winter because I, I fabric shop very differently in the winter, like a lot less than I would in the summer. So anyway. I sorted everything so the fabric in the cupboards above where I normally sew is all sorted. Um, up there I've got like chunkier fabrics and denim and fabric scraps but one thing I put everything in this box who you know I kind of had a, a purpose for or ideas for but now I'm thinking actually I might need to sort out a few bits of this for a D-stash September's always a good time for a D-stash as well because there's normally one in line with the Sew Yourself Sustainable Challenge in September. If not, I'll just D-stash as per usual, just move my shoes. Um, so we're going to go through this box. I'm going to time lapse me doing it because it's going to take a while. Um, but then I'll talk you through sort of where I've got to. Um, lots and lots of you recommended going through your stash and having a look at the fabrics you owned and generally just feeling fabrics and like having a look at yeah, just like what you fancy making, see if it sparks some, um, some inspiration. Now, I'm already feeling pretty good, but this box is weighing on me a little bit. It is, so I'm quite excited to go through it and see what's in here, what's what, and maybe what I've got some new ideas for. surprised by how little fabric is in here but it's now made me wonder I definitely have more so we'll find that at a later date but this has already been pretty good so in terms of fabric I have plans for uh, where are we 
so this is a bag full of activewear fabric so I'm gonna make a I think like another pair of leggings or I'm gonna make a matching sports bra to go with my leggings and then possibly some shorts in this fun fabric I was gonna make a bikini in this as well so I've still got pieces actually that we what this is for as well so that's fine okay I'm happy with that that will probably be a little later but it's technical fabric in the same vein i have got christmas fabric in here as well which is neatly packaged up this is left over from a sweatshirt i'm sure i can get something else out of this and this is sort of standard christmas cottons that i can make with presents and adam and i made stockings in last year so actually i'm fine with those those are fine now this fabric I'm super excited to use. This is a boucle I got last autumn actually, but I didn't feel confident in the pattern. I'm going to be making myself an A-line mini skirt in this with pockets, hopefully with pockets. Um, and if there is enough, well, it's, uh, it's hard actually. So I want to make myself an A-line mini skirt. However, I also really wanted a jacket in this, like a little blazer. So that's why it's also not been made up because I really can't decide what I want more. Oh, I think, no, I think I want a jacket more because I wear jeans more in the winter as well. And like black jeans. So, I mean, it looks good. I think it would look cute as, cute as like a blazer jacket. Right, it's definitely going to become, mm, yeah, no, it's going to be a jacket actually. So that's fine. We know about that. I have actually got a pattern that suit this as well. So happy with this. This can go back in. This I'm desperate to use because it's beautiful and summery, but also could be wintry. But I think I've passed the point of summer where this is doable. Um, what it was going to become is this dress. This one right here. I would still like to make it, but I just don't think there's any point really. It's it's kind of too warm, but I adore this fabric. This is from the rag shop actually. Um, it's a viscose, sort of acid daisy. It's really gorgeous. So I think you're gonna have to go away till next summer. You do feel gorgeous. Right, let's pop you back in the box. It's okay, I know what's in, in there. This, I think I'm actually gonna do something with soon. I got this in January. I love it, it's my first ever purchase from Hey So Sister. But again, I wasn't sure what I want to make with it. I've now decided I quite like this shirt dress, not the long version, the short version. Um, although, we'll see actually, but I like it. I like the sort of belt and equally, I think, I could wear the mini version with tights and boots. I think that's doable. And I love, this is like a cotton poplin and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern and it's black base, which means I can wear it most of the year. As you can probably tell, like I, I wear a lot of black. I do, I wear a lot of black and darker colors, which my sewing wardrobe wouldn't necessarily lead you to believe. But that's sort of my natural happy place is the sort of darker neutrals um, with like bright accents. I um, went through my wardrobe at the weekend and I kind of whittled it down to a key 30 piece that I adore and then like added things in and my base palette is like black and grey and navy and then bright red or like bright yellow or you know bright green and it's sort of that kind of dual colours and dark neutrals is very much me. So this I will get a lot of wear out of and now my new machine is better at buttonholes than my other machine. So this is actually going to go at the very top with this pattern to remind me what to make with it um behind the camera we've also got this fabric which i made a really cute top out of and i think i'm going to make a matching skirt but i also think this may have to go away until next summer now because it's not a skirt i'd be able to wear in the rain for example but i am very excited to use it so it goes back in the bag i have extra bengaline from my Tammy Handmade Leona dress. I've got quite a bit actually. Enough to make some, oh, hang on. Yeah, I've got loads left actually. Like enough to make something, maybe a top, but I'm not sure. So if you've got any ideas of what I could do with this, because I've already made a really gorgeous midi length slinky dress in it. So if you've got any ideas, maybe a pencil skirt, I might be able to get a pencil skirt out of it. It is gorgeous, I really like it, it's nice and bright. I could wear it with a black blazer and a black blouse as well in the winter, so, or even my black cashmere jumper actually in a mini skirt. This might become a small, like a knee length pencil skirt actually. I think, I think that's what this is destined to be. I'll have to measure out how much there is, but I am keeping that. 
So, fabric that I adore and don't know what to do with. This is non-stretch waffling. It is a lovely rust colour. It is ultimately autumnal, but I have no idea. Like, does anyone know of any patterns that you don't... I'm just going to wrap myself in it. Um, I'd quite like to make it a cardi, but I don't know of any patterns that are for a cardi that don't require stretch. So, because I'm thinking like a bat wing sort of scenario, like maybe maybe buttons, maybe a waterfall front, and um, sort of... Yeah, the thing is, it's, got, it's not really got any stretch. So yeah, I don't know if there's any cardi patterns out there, cardigans, throws, wraps, anything like that, that involve a non-stretch fabric. But that is kind of what I'm envisaging this as. So if you have any pattern ideas, please let me know. I'm going to put this to one side because it's a lot to fold. Fabrics I'm going to de-stash is this linen. Um, it's lovely, it's lovely quality. I just don't have a use for it. It's not really me. Uh, there's nothing I would make in this. I have no idea why I have it. Uh, same here, I made a lovely lot out of this textured navy ponted aroma, loads left, so I'm going to de-stash that. This fabric I actually got at the beginning of the spring from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. I love it, but I don't think, now I look at it, I, I don't know if I'm going to get anything, if I'm going to be able to make anything out of this, it's beautiful, and I was imagining like a sort of Tilly and the Buttons Indigo, maybe. Actually, as I hold it up to myself, I really, really do like it. Oh, this, oh, I don't know. This is going to go in a maybe pile because I cannot think of what I would make with it. I think definitely a dress. I think it's too bright to be like a single piece. But then I have a lot of dresses, so do I need it? That is the question, but it's beautiful. So let me know what you think. Do you know of a pattern that would go well with this? It's very, very floaty. Um, or do you think I should de-stash? Give me your thoughts below. And I'm also going to de-stash this. It's beautiful, I've got a couple of metres of it, but it's just, like I really like it, but it's just not really me. Um, so I will be putting these up on my Instagram as well, I think. And then my final one is this chiffon here. So it's lovely, it's kind of uh, completely see-through, but it's a beautiful colour and I think it would make a stunning skirt. But again, I think it's too summery and is going to have to be packed away until next summer. So that is all the fabric in this box, actually. I'm quite impressed. I thought there was a lot more. And I feel quite good about what's in here. I'm not, like, stressing. But it is really, really useful to know what I've got and to know why it's there. Oh, the other thing I've got in here is some black Jaffa's Cupro, uh, which is going to become a mini LED or a high-low skirt. But it will do so next summer. So let's pop it away in the box and we can deal with it. Next summer I know exactly what I want to make in it, it's just not really warm enough. Um, unless the next two weeks surprise me, September becomes incredibly hot and I need a plain black skirt, in which case I'll do it very quickly. <laughs> but um, yeah, otherwise that's kind of where we're going. And that's just some nice jersey that I've got. So that is what's in the fabric box. And has that helped me? I was about to turn it off and I realised I've not really talked about it. It has, because it's it's nice to handle fabric and sewing artefacts. It's nice to build that connection with my stash, to be aware of what I have. Sewing is a hobby I love. So just touching fabric actually is very soothing. <laughs> and it's very like, yeah, it reminds you sort of to think, what will I do with this? What was this originally for? Do I need this? I think for me, part of why my sojo goes is not because I don't have anything to make it's because I have too many things I could make and then my brain struggles to make a decision like I was thinking about what my sort of stress signs are and one of my big stress signs is not being able to finish things and so unfinished makes do stress me out I don't like it and so when I start leaving things because I just ugh, I don't want to that's a sign for me that I need to take a step back and evaluate what I'm making what's in the pipeline, am I excited about what I'm sewing? And that's actually really helped me do that. Right, so, um, a suggestion that actually that I'm putting into the pool, which helps me, that I forgot to put in my blog actually, so I thought I would talk about with you guys, is looking through the sewing fails hashtag on Instagram, because genuinely, it really helps. So, I've never filmed like this before, so you guys are gonna see me and you're gonna see my screen, because I'm gonna screen record, 
but I might be looking this way. So just bear with me, uh, this will be fine. Let me just get Instagram up because we all need a giggle. Uh, the Selling Fails hashtag is fabulous. I don't know if it was started for a specific purpose, but it is fabulous. So let's go, fails, right. There we go. Yeah, this is gonna be great because I think so many of us sort of think we're in isolation and that's part of the reason we don't talk about it. Sorry, it is so, like, so damp today. It's ridiculous. Uh, let's go, sewing failed. There we go. There's also, there's loads. There's sewing fail, which has got nine and a half thousand posts. Sewing fails, sewing fail Sunday, sewing fails of Instagram. We all do it. The, the sheer plethora of these hashtags should show that we all do it. So that is loading and fabulous. So what's first is important, I'm gonna scroll through. Like, there's a lot of familiar faces on here. There's a lot of people who we will all know and we think are, like we think of as being like, oh my God, how do they do it? But we all fail, that's fine, this is important. So have a wee look through. I'm quite interested to see what this one is about. Um, oh no, it is like, French seams that you have to unpick are so frustrating, especially if you've already cut off the fabric. It is, I'm gonna try and scroll, there's me, see, I'm on here. Um, and I'm gonna scroll through and I'm gonna try not to look at anyone's sort of captions that have them in them because I don't wanna embarrass anyone. So, as you can see, there's a lot of people of all walks of the sewing community, all types of garments, lots of bra fails, which I'm gonna be doing so long for a bra soon, so I'm sure there'll be lots of effing and blinding when I do that. I know how to do it already, but it is also one of those things where proportionately you're gonna make more mistakes than you would elsewhere, because it's such a small garment, they're so fiddly, and you need it to fit you perfectly. So, as we can see scrolling through, Genuinely, this stuff happens. It's fine. What on earth is this one? This is fabulous. Oh, I love a, um, I love a, what's it called? A uh, toile made from like different fabrics. And I love this person who has gone through and just gone, you know what? I'm excited about this idea, but it may not quite be me, and I wanna figure out how to make it better. Cause that's the other thing, is the sewing community is also a resource full of fabulous people um, who have all made mistakes. And if you call out and you go, oh, what have I done? There will be people who will be able to help you. Um, I've done it before, I've replied to someone and gone, oh, I've done that before, this is what you've done, and then helped. So, you know, and vice versa, I've had so many messages when I've gone, <laughs> what have I done? Where very, very good sewists have gone, you have done this. Um, and I've gone, I didn't even know that was possible. Okay, <laughs> so it's a learning experience. We need to learn to laugh at ourselves a little bit, but it's absolutely doable. So hopefully that does help just seeing the plethora of people out there who are in exactly the same position as you. You're not alone. You're not any worse of a sewist. It's fine. Like as well, if you go through there and actually read the comments as well, there are stuff in there through to my Davenport, for example, where I say I've made it and I just don't like it, through to the downright hilarious guys, how on earth have I done this? So, you know, there is so much scope as well it can be a sewing fail and you can laugh at yourself. You can put it away in a box, which I plan to do with my Davenport, and then bring it out in a month's time when I feel a bit better and see what I can do about it. But just, I think it's so important to like laugh at ourselves and just go, okay, well that didn't work. It's fine. And we can move on. Due to obviously YouTube's licensing uh, policies, etc., I cannot play you the music I've got on in the background. But this is my favourites playlist. I don't know how they compile it because it does seem to be like half favourites, half completely random songs I've never heard before. But it's what Apple Music records my favourites are. Um, I've tried listening to stuff today. I don't know if it's quite me because I'm more of a Netflix or a kind of podcast person, but it has been fun. It has sort of, it definitely helped in the morning when I wasn't feeling as enthusiastic. Like it's definitely cheered me up in that sense and sort of helped me just go for it. So you join me on the floor, you may have seen this whiteboard in the background of some of my videos. 
Um, fun story, this was actually our housemates at uni and she went a year abroad and basically left us with it and then just gave it to us. So now I have a whiteboard. Um, <clears throat> and I tend to use this board for work, for personal stuff, when I just need to see stuff in a one shot, clear, nothing else around them, no extraneous notes, I don't need to try and find it. Like, so work to do this sometimes get on here, exercise stuff sometimes gets on here when I just want it somewhere clear and clean and just mapped out. So I'm going to pick five projects that I want to do this year. And <clears throat> some people do three. Uh, this is something that Nicola, so so made by me is her Instagram handle. We have a good chat actually. Um, and she was talking to me about this saying that that's how she sort of got a handle on not being overwhelmed by projects and all that kind of stuff. And I quite liked it, especially as a sort of it gives me a chance to think about things I genuinely want to make and to sort of whenever I get if I get a bit down or I get overwhelmed by everything not sewing but like life generally then it's nice to sort of have a focal point to go you know what I want to work on this for a bit so that's what this board's going to be so number one on here is going to be my cloth habit Harriet bra I've got the materials although I'm one strap short actually um and I just want to make it. I've been putting it off for ages because I'm scared. But actually, I've got the machine. I know how to do it. And I've got all the kit. I've got all the space. There's no excuse now. And I just want to do it. I want that fantastic feeling of wearing something I'm really proud of that I've made. Um, point two doesn't have a pattern yet because it may not need one. I want a midi skirt. Now, I have bought some incredible white polka dot Georgette from Stitch and Ink, who is a new fabric shop I've just discovered. I did not that it didn't exist before I discovered it, that's a terrible way of phrasing that. I have just come across it. It's a fab shop. I think it is still fairly new though. Um, and I want to make like a cute midi skirt. Those are Adam's legs. Um, it's a, a casualty of sitting on the floor really. Um, and I want to make something that I can wear in the summer and the winter. I want to wear something floaty. I'm considering having the Georgette pleated. I don't know if I need a pattern because I just want a simple, like a black elastic contrast waistband. I've got some white jersey to go underneath to make a kind of underskirt. And then the top skirt would be pleated. Um, and it's just something I've got in my head that I'd like to make. There isn't necessarily a pattern. I don't know if there really needs to be one. Um, so yeah, I'm actually, I think I'm going to get that Georgette pleated. I think that's the plan, but midi skirt is going on here. And I want it monochrome because then I can wear it in all seasons. Probably more spring, summer and autumn, but still it's something I've wanted in my wardrobe for a while since I discovered midi skirts don't actually make me look short. What a win. <laughs> so that goes on there. Project three is I want to make a mini LED. So you guys have already seen me make the LED wrap dress but I've got some amazing um, red textured jacquard fabric from Rainbow Fabrics Kilden in the sale um, and I think it would make a really cute LED dress for the winter and like a sort of party dress almost. Like I think I could dress it down for work for like smart work meetings but dress it up a lot for like winter parties. I just don't really have any fun, like smart, interesting, beautiful dress makes that are sort of wintry. That a lot of them are very summery. So we'll put LED mini dress on here. Cause that is something I've been thinking about making for months. And if it goes well, I'm gonna make one in black Japanese Cooper as well. Cause I love the LED. It's such a great fit on my body. Like it, it's so flattering. I love the way it looks and it's very comfortable and it's got a lot of bust room like a lot of unseen bust room if that makes sense um which i'm a big fan of so those three for definite uh oh i want to make my hudson pants as well and there's a possible collaboration for those hudson pants which would be very very exciting because again they're on my make nine actually i've got three most of my make nine i think i've just got 
The Tilly and the Buttons Cleo, which I'm sort of eh on. I've got all the stuff to make it, but I'm nervous about the fit of the pattern because none of her patterns fit me properly. Um, I've got a blazer and I've got the Dawn jeans. So again, I do have all the kit to make jeans, but am I going to put that on myself right now? No, no, I'm not. Oh, I know. Make five is going to be the Nita wrap skirt. So the Nita wrap skirt is a so DIY pattern and I got it free for pattern testing for their most recent Miri tank, which I recommend. It's a nice pattern that actually has cup sizes built in, which is, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, but the Nita wrap skirt can be three lengths, mini, kind of knee length and midi, I think. Um, and it can be like an actual open like wrap round one or a closed wrap, and I'm making a mini denim version. Oh, my throat is going. <laughs> I'm going to make a mini denim version and I've got some beautiful denim to make it with from Blackbird Fabrics. So when that arrives, I don't know what post from Canada's like at the moment. So <laughs> it'll be at some point. But this is my five. Now, I know that not many of these are sort of in vogue patterns. They're not patterns everyone's talking about really. But I don't care because they're for me and whilst there definitely has to be an element when I'm sewing on YouTube of making patterns you guys want to see and equally with being an ambassador and stuff sort of making projects that are interesting that you can get fabric for but I think these ones apart from the Harriet bra which will definitely get a sew along because I want to do a sew along for that I think the rest of these are just going to be for me I think yeah I think the rest of these will just be quiet non-filming They'll go on Instagram when they're done, but I think I'm going to keep this for me. So, this is my lovely sewing project list. I'm going to draw a line under it so I don't get tempted to add more. That is a trick, by the way. If you're like me and you end up making very long lists, finish your list, draw a line under it so you can't add everything else. Um, and then underneath I might do a little, a smaller, like, vlog breakdown in terms of what I am going to do for the next few months but I won't do that on camera because that's not really relevant but this is my list and actually already I'm feeling more enthused about sewing and about going for these projects because these are all things I really want to make they're all things I absolutely want to do and therefore they will be great fun because I want to do them particularly the midi skirt I'm quite nervous because I've never like I've never done anything like it but equally, I've seen them everywhere and I love them. I love the pleated uh, midi skirt vibe. They're great for work. They look really smart. Um, but they're also super comfy and very transitional between seasons, which is the win. It's what we want. Um, yeah, so this is my short little list. So if I make nothing else this year, which is so unlikely, I'm going to make these five things. Part of today as well is suggested doing something sewing related or learning a new technique, whether that's on scrap fabric or different, you know, something else or it's, it's something little. Today, I have decided to learn to use a ribbing. So I'm making my Mylan sweatshirt and part of that ambassador project is I'm going to use ribbing for the first time. I'm going to do a proper tutorial in the blog post because I don't want to spoil it all now. It's proper collaboration and everything. But I am going to be using ribbing to do the cuffs. Here we are, sorry, still got a pattern piece attached. There we are, here is my cuff ribbing. So I will put in a time lapse of me doing these and show you the result, but I won't like show you how I'm doing it because um, it's really, really exciting. But that's, that's what I'm gonna challenge myself to do today. I've always wanted to use ribbing. It's part of a project anyway, so I might as well tackle that today. guys I work with ribbing woo I have beautiful sleeves and I have a lovely neckband as well I'm so chuffed um today has been one of little victories but it's also been wonderful so some of you asked this so I thought I might as well say it. how long do I spend sewing today I have sewn for about seven hours and that's that's good for me like I like a long sewing day I like to really settle in Adam is so sweet and came in, he's just finished work and normally he would come and he would sit and game at our dining table and I would be in the office 
but because I've sort of created a bit of a sewing den in here, he said, he, like, without any prompting, he was like, I'm going to sit in the office because it's so nice to see you all spread out and doing everything in here. And it feels so good. I feel so enthusiastic. I love it. So I'm well chuffed to have conquered another sewing skill and to feel really comfortable using ribbing. Uh, check out the vlog that's coming out on Saturday for the whole sew along for this jumper and um, a little further discussion on how to use ribbing as well will be in the blog post on the same day, woo! So we've reached the end of my day um, and I've managed to fit in a few of the recommendations. I really enjoyed having a go through my stash, I enjoyed setting myself some projects that felt really affirming. Um, it was great to just get back to doing some tried and tested sewing, so many of you recommended that and it has to be said, it works, knowing a pattern, like working with a comfortable stable fabric, knowing the pattern will suit you, it's all really great and I really, really needed it. Today I have spent around 8 hours doing sewing and sewing related things and I've treated it almost like a work day and it was heaven. I'm somebody who can craft for an hour here and there but I love my proper long sewing days. I absolutely love them because they really allow me to get into it with a podcast or a TV series or an audio book or whatever it is. I can really get into my sewing and it's been great as well. I'll take you a little tour to the living room. This wasn't one of my tips in the video, but actually sewing in a new space, I cannot recommend enough. It's really made me, I don't know, just, open my eyes a bit more, feel more comfortable just spreading out across the living room, having the space to do things I want to do and that has been absolutely wonderful. So it's been great, I've had such, I've had so much fun. Um, so on screen right now, I'm going to shuffle this way, um, you will see a big list of everything, I well at the time of recording, everything everyone suggested. So there's a few things that I didn't get a chance to do, so I was going to make a tailor tam today but I decided to finish my rag shop ambassador project instead. So recommending doing little scrap buster projects on the premise that any sewing is better than no sewing. One or two people suggested sewing for other people if you're getting frustrated sewing for yourself. Now I know that wouldn't work for me because I hate sewing for other people but for any of you who sew for your kids or relatives or partners regularly then that could be a good option. Um, a couple of others have just said, get rid of the offending item, whether it's putting it in a box or donating it immediately or cutting it up and making something new. Get rid of it if you truly hate it because it's just gonna sit there mocking you. If it's on your mannequin, half finished, take it off, put it in a bag and deal with it in a week's time because you don't need that. You don't need it staring at you while you're trying to do something new. Um, so th those were on there, I have as I say, put the list there for you guys. There's loads of lovely suggestions, but what I hope is clear as well from the number of suggestions is how many of us this affects. We all do it. We all have our off days. We all make things that we're not keen on. We all make mistakes and screw up and make. It's fine. So I hope you've enjoyed following along with my sort of choose your own adventure day. It's been really good actually. Um, and honestly, this one day of unadulterated sewing has been worth more than a whole bank holiday's worth of sewing together. I feel fantastic. I hope it's clear actually how good I feel. Um, my throat's still a bit croaky, but we're getting there. <laughs> oh my god, had a couple of extra hits of my inhaler today, but we're here. <laughs> so I hope it's clear how much enthusiasm I've gained today. I, I'm so actually quite emotional at how good I feel. I feel fabulous, I feel excited to take on new sewing projects, I feel just enthused, truly enthused with my hobby and that's how we should be, it's a hobby, it's meant to be fun. All that remains for me to say is thank you so much for watching, it has been a joy to film this, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Um, I will be coming up with a bra sew along uh, in September and also my summer makes roundup as well as a few other bits and pieces. Now I'm going to go and finish off my rag shop guest blog. now I finish the make and that will be coming to you on Saturday so look out for that. But otherwise have a fabulous rest of your day and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.